Welcome to the Chick Foley Show. What is up, Foley fam? We are back with episode 149 of the Chick Foley Show. We are one week away from the milestone episode 150. It's a little bit of a slow week in wrestling, so we cooked up a uh, slightly different format for you guys we think you're going to like. Let me start off by introducing the stars of the show. Sheena, how you doing? I'm good. I'm tired. I've, you know, hauled the kids all over uh, South Central Kentucky. If you guys aren't noticing, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you're noticing I don't have all my Halloween zombies in the background. I'm in a whole new studio. I'm out here in like, you know, Alvaton studio. So, uh, you know, hopefully everything sounds okay because I'm out here in the boon sticks and the internet, you know, it's like basically like little crows flying back and forth communicating with the internet. So... You sound um, smooth as hell right now. You sound like uh, Ira Glass on NPR, man. So, ooh, that's the ultimate the, compliment. Thank yeah, you. The, the Thank good thing you. about being out in the boonies, most of the people out there probably don't even know what the internet is. So you kind of got all the bandwidth oh to yourself. You know, that's true. And Chilling. it's eight thirty, uh, and we're kind of out here. You know, and like everybody's already in bed. You know, there's really nothing to do out in the boonies. You know, so yeah, everybody's already sleeping right now. <laughs> Marco, how's life up in Massachusetts? Good, good. We're uh, just prepping for uh, for for Halloween. Trying to get our uh, costumes going, and the kids got their costumes, and uh, my wife got hers, and I'm working on mine right now. But uh, I'm not. I'm not going to give it away. It's going to be a secret. Oh, it's going to be. Uh, we're going to have a mystery reveal on Christmas. So yeah. So on so, Christmas, yeah, I, on Halloween, I think Christmas, Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> what am I talking about? Drinks. <laughs> drinks are already in the system. But yeah. Um, yeah, I can't wait to uh, unveil it. It's going to be. I think you guys will appreciate it. I'm stoked. Yeah. All right. Sheena, remind the folks where they can find you guys on. He's back. The one and only. The big god. <laughs> Sheena's got the fireflies out. Jordan, what's going on, man? What is up, dudes and dudettes? I am uh, ready to talk some wrestling. It has been a slow week. Well, wrestling-wise, but not life-wise, so... <laughs> Let's get it going. <laughs> for uh, for those watching on YouTube, and again, we'll have the link in the show notes for the YouTube link. It wasn't as much of a surprise this time because you guys could see Jordan. I was actually looking into it if there was any kind of effects we could do on the uh, the Zencaster platform. I really kind of wanted Jordan's thing to go black, and we could try to splice in the old uh, the old Wyatt family video drop before he popped up. But uh, st- that's a little bit beyond our production value at the current time. But Jordan, glad to have you, man. Uh, it's always fun when we get the uh, the fourth man in the booth. Anybody that's listened to our Patreon exclusive episode, you guys know uh, you're in for a treat anytime Jordan is on the episode. Sheena, remind the folks where they can find you guys on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Chick Foley. Marco graciously running the Twitter machine over at Chick Foley Show. And you can join our Facebook group uh, at chickfoleyshow.com. Um, it's a Patreon exclusive group. Amazing stuff going on in there every single week. We have uh, our new Halloween Havoc episode uh, that is launching this weekend. So stay tuned for that. Lots of fun. Lots of, you know, we, we don't get too dirty here, but lots of effery, if you will, um, <laughs> that, that's going on in that episode. So oh, super yeah, stoked. Rated. Uh, yeah, it's, it's R-rated. So join us over there. Uh, listen to our bonus content, buy, sell, trade figures. And it's just a great group of uh, drama-free marks that, uh, you know, Yeah, and we got uh, Jordan, the best, the best figure hunter in the United States, going out and uh, snatching up figs for everybody. That's right. He had a good figure uh, hunting day today, too. Yeah, he did. Today was a good day. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit later on during the figure four. Uh, Jordan, you want to plug your fig god uh, Instagram? Yeah, so uh, find me at the Fig God on Instagram. Uh, I'm gonna start uploading some more videos of fig hunts I do and stuff now that I'm getting a little bit back to normal in life with work slowing down a little bit. Um, so yeah, we'll do some videos on there and. And make you some completed fun with your it. deck. Jordan's been doing it all, dude. He's, dude, he's working. Building he's deck. building. He's building decks and Fucking patios around his got house. A do- got a dog. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, yeah, I forgot this, about that. This Not is just, just a dog. You got a puppy. You got a puppy. So yeah. that's like basically having a new baby. You Man, know. It, it has. It's been like a brand new year in the last month. I mean, yeah, deck and a dog. It's like, dude, can anything else happen? Like, let's just That's going to be the that. name of Jordan's autobiography, A Deck and a Dog. And a dead guy. <laughs> deck dog and a dead guy. Uh, Marco, what's going on with the Pod Foundation this week? 
Oh, man. So we'll start it off with uh, debate number 48 from the uh, Turnbuckle Tavern, which kind of, you know, sparked uh, what we got going on in this show this mm-hmm. week. So uh, with uh, with their with their conversation on Roman Reigns. But um, moving on, they have uh, the uh, Turnbuckle Sessions. Um, they did some historical homage with uh, uh, Ric Flair versus Steamboat and I believe Tito Santana versus Greg Valentine. Um it's uh, Mike Belcaster and the OG Fig Kid uh, take you down memory lane and go over those two matches. Nice. Stuff like that. It's actually really, really good listen if you guys haven't listened yet, definitely. Um, and then we have Extra Cooler Show uh, where they go over a uh, on SmackDown 20 years ago, not to this day, but the day they actually recorded it. It was a uh, TLC um, tag team match for the uh, tag team championships, uh, which is pretty awesome. I'm not going to I'm not going to say the names because there's a person that we can't speak of. Um, oh boy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's uh, kind of barred from it. Um, he who he who should not be named. Yeah, he 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 who should not be named. Um, but then, obviously, you know, AEW is tonight as we record. So there's no recap from the uh, Turnbuckle Tavern, but they do have a show called Tur- uh, "The Tavern Goes to Hell," uh, where they go uh, ranking. Uh, they rank six wrestlers, six horror movies, and six monsters. If you get it, that's six, awesome. Six. Um, so yeah, definitely listen to that. And today they dropped uh, their uh, visits to Tavern, which uh, with uh, Anti Hero SOS. Uh, his name is Scotty O'Shea, um, and actually they they had a pretty cool message to him. He went for a uh, emergency brain surgery. Uh, oh, wow. they, they recorded this a couple of wow. weeks ago, um, but yeah, he just he went in for emergency brain surgery. So they you know they sent their well wishes, and obviously we here at the Chick Fil A show want to send our well wishes yeah, to him as well, definitely, um, and hope for a speedy recovery. Sure. Uh, Sorry to bring it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we were getting, yeah, we were getting we to get a little out. too jovial on the show. So let's get yeah. the yeah. back up. Um, Sheen, you ready to give away uh, Cactus Jack? Yeah, it's weird. I usually have the figure here to, to hold. So Seth, do you, do you have it with you or did you did you fail to do the, the job for me this week? No, nah, he, he's sitting over in the pile to get shipped out. So he's already in the express lane ready okay. to roll out. Everybody okay. knows what it looks like, though. This is the ringside exclusive uh, Cactus Jack Elite. Sheena is going to announce the winner and I'm going to hit the drum roll. The winner of the ringside exclusive Cactus Jack figure is Randy Smith. Dude, congratulations. That is an epic figure. I'm so stoked for you. Longtime Foley fan member. So uh, yeah, he's, well, he's a well classic deserved. superstar. No, no, uh, yeah. no first time in the line on this one. So that's yeah, right. Randy the Ram, slide into the DMs. Give us uh, that shipping address and we will get Cactus Jack headed your way, man. Um, we want to remind you guys to use code Chick Foley to save 10% on all of your figure purchases. And speaking of that, we'll go ahead and get into next week's giveaway. It is going to be for, uh, the man who's going to whoop Bobby Lashley's ass this, uh, this Thursday at, uh, this coming Thursday at crown jewel, uh, the one Yikes. and only Bill Goldberg. So this is the top picks comes with the, uh, the blue universal title and it can be yours all you need to do is just shoot a screenshot to either marco on twitter or sheena on instagram showing that you listen to this week's show and we will announce the winner um at the start of next week's episode yeah and uh, if you, you watch on youtube you can just take a picture you can just take a screenshot of the youtube too so you know that yeah, works that works too. too we're making you guys have multiple avenues that you could uh that you could use to get into this contest uh you guys ready to get yeah. into our topic of the week let's, let's go do that. so go. Marco kind of hinted at it at the start, talking about Turnbuckle Tavern. Their debate this week, um, they the topic was actually, is Roman Reigns overrated? Or has Roman Reigns' heel run been overrated? I think was the specifics on it. Um, the OG Fig Kid, the staple of the Turnbuckle Tavern, Tom Montalto, also a premium Foley fan member, uh, he really kind of came off the top rope on Roman, specifically talking about how Roman is no Kenny Omega. And, uh, you know, it was like, uh, Hulk Hogan, you know, when someone hurts your pride, you know, you got to take a stand. You can't let it slide. I had to jump in our Turnbuckle Tavern uh, group chat, and I really kind of just, I, I, you know, I gave Tom the business a little bit, and then that kicked off what ended up being probably about a four or five hour back and forth. I mean, we we need yeah. somebody to go back and um and kind of recap like the actual count of the messages. I, I said an idea yeah. we could do the first ever scripted uh pod foundation episode and just reenact the entire uh text chain because it was kind of me and marco on one side marco was really going hard but i was i was i was doing some shit around the house and i was still sliding in with some jabs every once in a while backing up marco <laughs> against all the t- you know the turnbuckle tavern crew they're repping hard for kenny 
Jordan was coming in every once in a while on the, on the side for Kenny, but we went back and forth for a long time and it kind of, it really ended up blowing up being more than, uh, than Roman and Kenny. It was kind of like your overall philosophy on, on wrestling. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Marco, uh, what, what was your take? Cause you and you and Chad were really kind of getting, uh, getting half hot <laughs> at each other, man. I, you know, I thought these Cowboys were shooting there for a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, no, obviously it's all, it's all in fun. You, with a, I mean, obviously with a, with a group of people that can have a debate, about something and not go too crazy without like flying insults at each other. Actually, they, I mean, he was kind of throwing insults at Roman Reigns, but I was, I was keeping it clean. I wasn't saying anything bad about Kenny Omega. I was, you know, throwing out straight facts. Taking the high road. Like that. But um, yeah, I was taking the high road on, on, on most of it, but no, he wasn't going too crazy with it, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, was, it wasn't too bad. It was, he said, you, you know, we, you got a rep for your guy. I mean, I, I love yeah. Kenny Omega. As you can see, I'm wearing a Kenny Omega shirt right now. Um, but you know, when it comes to the the Reigns train, man, he, the Reigns train doesn't stop for anybody. It, yeah. Not even, it's, it's not even Omega steam. Station. Yeah, it's going a, a full steam ahead right now. I literally, yeah. it was the day that I was traveling to Kentucky, from Virginia to Kentucky. So I was driving like the whole first half of the day, you know, and all of a sudden I get I get to Kentucky. I open up the our pod foundation chat and like the messages just explode. Like it's just like this, like, tick, 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 like, you know, just messages flying up. And I'm like, what the heck happened? You know, and I see people like, you know, arguing and like throwing, you know, like little lighthearted jabs at each other. I'm like, what did, did the pod foundation implode while I was gone? What happened here? And then I saw, I saw that it was like all the, the Kenny and Roman talk and I went back and caught up on it. But yeah, it was like hundreds of messages for sure. Yeah, it was, it was pretty epic, man. We used up some serious data. Uh, this week. So yeah. with that in mind, um, we kind of decided it was a little bit of a slow week in wrestling news. So we're basing the entire main story this week is Roman versus Kenny. I mean, I, I think it's pretty much unanimous across the wrestling fandom that these are the two biggest stars in the wrestling world right now. And we're just going to have it out. You know, it's primarily going to be, uh, you know, Jordan versus Marco here. I think they're the uh, probably the farthest apart on the uh, the two sides mm -hmm. on this argument. I, I lean Roman, but I can still respect what Kenny's doing. Um, Same. Sheena's a little yeah. bit, you know, probably the most in the middle out of all of us, but we got it I'm down a Libra. to five categories. I, I, I like to, I make a, you know, my whole life's work is to like keep the balance, keep the peace, you know, be like a, and I can empathize and see both sides of, of, you know, the, of an issue. So yeah, I'm, I, I'm here to kind of help you guys get through this and work through this. And we're going to figure out who, who is ultimately the, the best of them all. So we're going to, the categories are going to be in ring promo presence look and then we'll close it out with overall so uh we'll start off with what i think is probably going to be the uh the least debatable um we'll go with in ring and uh jordan i'll toss it to you first man who is better in ring out of kenny omega and roman reigns all right so this this i think is the one where i don't even think it's really arguable honestly like dude kenny this dude literally was known as the five-star bout machine. Like, whatever yeah. you want to say about uh, Dave Meltzer and his stupid ratings, I get it. Oh, like, Dave Meltzer. They are, stu they are stupid. Like, whatever. We respect Uncle Dave, but he's still a dickhead. Yeah. Um, he's the but, definitive source, though. You know, he he, yeah. he is, man. I, and I don't even, like, look at people's ratings, per se. It's just, like, I, I just look with my own eyes. Like, And with my own eyes, like, I can definitely see that Kenny is is superior in the ring. I mean, it's really not debatable. Like Kenny's move set, it it works against anybody, right? I mean, he can do his moves against anybody. Not saying Roman can't. I'm just saying like Kenny has so many moves in his repertoire, and he uses every one of them in every match. Granted, he has started leaning more on the V trigger. He does that fucking eight thousand times a match, which I don't love now, but. I mean, dude, when you go back and watch New Japan, Kenny, like no matter who he was wrestling, it was a straight banger, no matter who it was. Like, yeah. dude, he could have a five star match with a young boy from New Japan and it'd be completely a fine. A nine year old girl. Yeah. Like, dude, Kenny just, <laughs> he just puts on matches. Like, dude, he's just a showman. I mean, more than anything, that's what he does. And like, dude, Roman has gotten a lot better in the ring. I'll mm -hmm. admit this. And, Everyone here knows, like, I was the biggest Roman hater up until the last year. Like, dude, I couldn't stand the dude. I didn't like what the dude did. I just, I felt like it was so repetitive. It was the same thing over and over. The dude has grown in the ring a lot. I will say that. His move set is a lot better now. He he uses the moves at the right time. It's just not like the five moves of doom, you know? Yeah. It's It, it feels more well-rounded now. 
But yeah, I mean, for me, th- this is an easy one for Kenny. The, to me. the one winged angel is definitely a much more protected, deadly move than the spear. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. or the Superman punch. You know, yeah. like there's no, there's no debating. Like it's taken several Superman punches to get people down before, and several spears to get people down before. But when Kenny hits that one winged angel, dude, it, it's lights out. It's it's over. You know, and so. nobody nobody uses that move other than him. Right, it, it's yeah. his fucking move. Like, yeah. dude, one winged angel. Like when you think of that, you immediately think of Kenny. Like when you say spear, like dude, you, you could think of a number of people that have used right. spears or finisher. I mean, it's not like it's a unique move to Roman. Like to me, the shield power bomb is more of a, a unique root move to Roman for me. Like, right. cause the spear is not a unique move. I mean, it's just not. And then I did say he has overused the V trigger, but that dude, when he throws that knee, I, there's sometimes, I don't know how the other dude gets up. Honestly. Kenny goes so on fast Brian in the was ring crazy. too. Oh my God, dude. I thought he killed him. Yeah. I'm like, this yeah, dude's she, got that neck a good injuries. Point. I think that's the one. I, uh, I think that's, that's something that really kind of separates Kenny's the speed. He moves within the ring. That's something that Seth used to have before the knee injury. That's kind of been missing, but yeah, he like Kenny, like it seems like he is sprinting when he's like running the ropes for that V trigger mm-hmm. and, and the other moves he does. And I think that's something that really sets him off. Uh, right. Marco, I'm going to toss it to you, man. St- strong opening argument from Jordan. Do you have a rebuttal <laughs> for Roman being better in ring than Kenny Omega? Yeah, I think I, I think I said that in the, uh, in the when we were having that, you know, discussion in the group chat that obviously Kenny Omega is going to like wrestle circles around Roman Reigns if, when it comes down to game time. But obviously they have their, their different styles of wrestling, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where Roman Reigns is more slow and methodical. Kenny Omega is that, like you said, that speedy guy. He's, he's running all over the place. Um, yeah. The other thing we'll commend Kenny Omega for is he does, uh, he's been working, I think with a back injury for a while. Um, yeah. If if any, I'm not sure if it, that's a, it's yeah. not public knowledge. I don't think. I think it's just like you know things that were said here and here. But yeah, he's definitely he's injured and he's still like you know performing at a high, you know, right. um, at a high. Uh, what do you call it? The words escaping me. It's a high level, level, high caliber, high level. Yeah. Yes, um, but yeah. So I mean, hats off to, to to definitely Kenny Omega. But like I said, it, you know, it's 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 all subjective too. It depends on what t- style of wrestling you like as well. That's I mean. This is what's going to come down to the subjective thing. Right. So do you yeah. like the slow methodical? I have a lot of feelings like that. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah. you know, it really depends on what your criteria is for all of these things. And you know, the, 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 the what you like in wrestling, like, you know, we're, we'll talk about yep. this more, but like, you know, like if you like the WWE style or if you like the indie style, like there's all kinds of preferences that go into this argument. You know I mean? No, nobody's arguing that either one of these guys could be number one or number two, you know what I mean? Or yeah. they can both yeah. be number one just in different ways. So yeah, yeah. I, lo- I love, I love this discussion because again, it's just like so subjective. Yeah. Gina the other thing about is, that too is Gina is riding yeah. that fence hard folks. If uh, you guys didn't think that read between the I'm lines. A, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm right not going to ride the fence, but obviously <laughs> I'm going to defend Roman, but you have, you have to give props to the other guy as well. Like it, it, it depends on what you like. Like we said, it depends on what you want to watch. So like when I, when I want to see a style like Kenny Omega's, I want to see him wrestling that style. I don't, I don't think anyone else can wrestle that no. style of wrestling that he does. Like I, I love Daniel Bryan. I love all those guys there at AEW. But that's not everyone. A lot of those guys do that style of wrestling in AEW, mm-hmm. and he's that guy that does that the best out of all of them. So when it comes yeah. to the sports entertainment side of things, Roman Reigns right now is the if you want to say he's the best sports entertainer that they have. Um, what about matches? You, so here, like you know, and, and we can even make it as of late because if you want to talk about since Kenny's been in AEW versus like since um, Roman has been a heel in WWE, I would say the Roman has had better matches in that period of time than Kenny. I mean, like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Cause, uh, we, cause we talked about this. At, we talked about this like uh, before when uh, dynamite started that when Kenny first, when AEW first started, we weren't getting the, you, I don't yeah, care. You, 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 you guys can the, deny this all you want, but we yeah. were not getting that new Japan. Kenny. No, we right. were not. That, that's, and, no he was do, and he was doing a lot of tag team stuff in the beginning yep. when he was relying on the Bucks a lot. So it was kind of like, you know, yeah. he, was, he wasn't standing on his own, whereas like Roman, you know, he hasn't been in the Shield in a very long time. So he's been exactly. you know, growing and evolving his singles career yep. this entire time. You know, he hasn't yep. really kind of like fallen back into being a tag team wrestler ever since he broke back or 
broke away from the shield, you know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, you guys all shook your head. You don't think, you don't think Roman's had some great matches as a heel he with like, like Kevin he Owens and Daniel Bryan and well, freaking think, um, uh, Drew McIntyre. I mean, I don't know. I, did, I wasn't super impressed with his match with Drew McIntyre. To me, the Roman matches that stick out since he came back was the Hell in the Cell match with Jay Uso, the WrestleMania yeah, triple Jay. threat with Daniel Bryan and Edge. And I don't know. I mean, that's really the two that really go above and beyond for me, whereas Kenny has had the tag team match with him and Hangman against the Bucks is one of the best tag team matches of all time. His one-on-one match with Hangman on pay-per-view last year was incredible. Um, he had a hell well, of a What about match. him as champion? You're okay. You're right. I, I should have said, I should have clarified since Kenny has been champion, um, his, his matches. Now I didn't mean all of his, since like, he's since been he's champ, been AEW. um, I mean, yeah, he's had some, who's great had matches. the better championship run, you know? Well, I think uh, Roman's had the better championship run. Cause he's, he's been dominating so much where even though he's cheated, I feel like he's cheated in like a less underhanded way than, uh, right. than Kenny. But, um, yeah, I don't, I, I think Roman's been a little bit more dominated in the ring, but now we're talking kayfabe because I was gonna. The thing I was gonna say is I think even though we're all in agreement that in ring, Kenny's got you know Kenny's got a leg up on Roman. If we're talking kayfabe, and I, I mentioned this in the group chat, Daniel or uh, Kenny Omega just wrestled to a thirty minute draw with a guy that Dan, uh, Roman Reigns stacked a Hall of Famer on top of and pinned right. at WrestleMania. So <laughs> yeah. you know it's not it's not a shoot, it's a work. And if we're talking a work, the argument's already mm-hmm. been sold in force in ring, Roman over yeah. Kenny. But uh we know it's a little bit yeah. more complicated than that. Um it you guys be, ready to talk it, about go ahead, Marco. Yeah, we also can't forget his match with uh with with Daniel Bryan, his Daniel Bryan's last match on SmackDown. Um, oh yeah. That was also a title defense yeah. and that match was awesome as well. That was so. an awesome match. You I got, was in, I was in the Thunderdome for that. Yeah. Yep. When Sheena said two years so since kenny's been in AEW, i was like guys we're not gonna just like sweep this under the rug that roman was wrestling baron corbin 18 months ago in a fucking <laughs> dog food match like yeah. we're not just gonna sweep this under the rug like that didn't happen that everybody fucking has, happened everybody has their their you know peaks and valleys okay george that, yeah, that's, that, that, no, that that's not, not a valley that's the grand canyon that is so, not so, their, <laughs> that is not a reflection of roman reigns that is a reflection of horrible writing creative and booking like that that is just terrible that that has nothing to do with roman yeah so okay. i was, all, I was gonna, so before we go to the next one i was also going to mention this like they both kind of had the same like for the past two years right during the pandemic and all that stuff well roman wasn't really around during the pandemic but before the pandemic happened they they both had this kind of path where they were just like kind of floundering in their yep. respective companies, mm-hmm. like, like obviously, like you know, like we said, Kenny Omega wasn't the Kenny, Kenny Omega we seen in New Japan. He was kind of you know, like you said, tagging up with the young Finding bucks his and place, yeah. you know, losing to people and like you know, not having the greatest match. Like remember the match he had with Pac? Mm-hmm. And that, that that was a match that signified like to everybody that like everyone's like collective thing was like this isn't the Kenny Omega that we yeah. seen dominate in New Japan. Like when when that match happened with Pac, it was just the weirdest, most awkward. Yeah, like match like they either their styles clashed or it was just I don't know they weren't oh, prepared it, for it. It was just on that same on that same note. I think the one of the biggest things that like in that same vein is that they've always presented Roman as a freaking top as the top dog yes. as the big yeah. dog. Like it doesn't matter even if he was even during his suffering succotash promo he was still presented like he was the big dog you know what i mean like the company was behind him whereas like kenny we were all hype when they, when aew uh when kenny and them started aew because we we're like holy shit we're gonna get you know new japan you know bullet club kenny in this new company and it, it wasn't presented like that so it's kind of hard like to work backwards i've talked about this before you know like now we're to believe you know and of course we all know because we're you know but in kayfabe or if you're, you just started watching AEW, you're supposed to believe that this is like the best wrestler in the world. And he came into the company kind of in this slump where he wasn't really like doing his normal thing. And he wasn't presented as such a big deal. I mean, you had like Mox and Chris Jericho and all of them being presented and even Hangman being presented as a bigger deal than Kenny Omega. Um, and so it's kind of hard to work backwards from that and now tell them like, oh, well, this is the best wrestler in the world, you know, and we've gotten past that. But I feel like that was a huge hurdle in the beginning, whereas with Roman, there was never any doubt that he was supposed to be the guy. You yeah, know? I think that was what? due to uh, that was just because they were making a concerted effort to not push Cody, Kenny and the Bucks out of the gate because the big fear that was that 
AEW was going to be TNA 2.0, where, you know, Jeff Jarrett was the, the owner and also like the main event talent. And I think they just were really, uh, they, they may have leaned a little too hard into that direction they at did. the start of it. Yeah. And, you know, obviously they've corrected it since then. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. Kenny was, uh, it took a little bit before he was really presented as, as the, you know, the best wrestler in AEW. All right, let's talk promo. So I'm going to put Sheena on the spot first on this one. Who gives the better promo, Kenny Omega or Roman Reigns? So this is a very broad topic because I feel like you could go a lot of different ways depending on what era of Roman and Stop Kenny fence writing. Stop you qualifying your answer. Talking about. Answer <laughs> you the know? question, Sheen. So I'm going to say, don't at me. Right now, Roman Reigns is cutting better promos than Kenny Omega because I just feel like he just feels very authentic in what he's doing. He feels like a badass. It doesn't feel forced. It doesn't feel like he's trying to be a heel, which sometimes I feel like Kenny is really just trying to like be over the top. And that's kind of, you know, maybe that's part of his part of the gimmick of how he gets heel heat. Um, but I feel like Roman just his, his presence is what makes him a heel. His badassery is just what makes him a heel. Um, and he doesn't have to like, you know, give over the top promos. He just says what he means. Um, and then, you know, walks out of the ring. And, you know, I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, Oh, the only reason Roman is over is because he's got Paul Heyman. But I, I don't think that he's, that Paul Heyman is being used in the same capacity that he was used with Brock. Like he was straight up Brock's mouthpiece. Like Brock just showed up, kicked ass. And that's what he did. He never spoke or anything like that. Whereas Roman, He's literally cutting all of his own promos every once in a while, you know, um, Paul will jump in or Jay will jump in um, and say something, you know, but ultimately like Roman's carrying his own weight in, in his promos. And at this moment right now, champion versus champion, I, I take uh, Roman's Roman's promos. All right, Marco, we let uh, Jordan kick off the uh, in ring portion. Uh, we'll give you first stab this time promos, Kenny or Roman. I think Sheena had a uh, she kind of nailed it as far as, as my thoughts on the two of them. Uh, what's your take? Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think I have to add add to anything. <laughs> besides, uh, I mean, you know, they both have their uh, obviously. Like Paul Heyman isn't the isn't an advocate right now. He's just a part of the council. Um, mm -hmm. So he, he wise he, man. He, he consoles. He's the wise man of uh, of yeah. Roman Reigns. So he doesn't need him to speak. He just he needs him to reassure. Um, kind of like how he did. Uh, let's let's say last week when um, he made you know he had uh, Paul Heyman tell. Brock Lesnar, you know, in person that he was going to beat him like that type of like, he'll, he'll say what right. he needs to say. He's um, the messenger. I feel yeah. like, I feel like, uh, Heyman is the messenger, Yeah, you know? Yeah. His role is completely different with, uh, with mm -hmm. Roman Reigns and Roman Reigns is always able to speak. Even when they, you know, they had that first shot of them together and we were just like, what the hell they're together. And then the next mm -hmm. week on SmackDown, you would think, you know, Ro uh, Paul Heyman was going to cut this like crazy promo on how, you know, how they got together and all that stuff. But, it was it was Roman that actually cut the promo, um, mm -hmm. that you know claimed he was ahead of the table and all that stuff, the tribal chief, all that. So like, yeah, I mean, it, you know, with with Kenny's promos, you know, you have Don Callis in there. Ta he talks a lot. Um, I think Don Don talks. I think Don talks more than Paul Heyman. Don carries Kenny's yeah, promos does. more than Paul carries Roman's promos for sure. Yeah, and I said and I said this before too. Like uh, the two bad chads kind of called me out on this. Um, I love Kenny Omega. Like he's one of my favorite wrestlers, but I, I don't buy him as a heel. That's, that's my biggest thing. Like if he was just like a kind of like, you know, rode the fence a little bit, if he was like kind of good guy, bad guy, I could buy that. But as a, like, it just comes off. I think like to me, it comes off comedic when he's trying to be like, Definitely. like, like he's trying to be like this badass dude. And maybe that's not his angle. Maybe he's not trying to be a badass heel maybe just trying See, to be like a, he is i don't think he ass. is See, i i think the heel. smarmy kind of smart ass like obnoxious mullet and like over the top like clothes and like attitude and everything to me i like that i like that kind of heel you but, know what i mean and it, it, it works for me i mean a lot of people say it comes off as comedic i don't mind a little comedy you know I, I, again this is totally like what your preference is whether yeah. you prefer the roman style like you know just beefy badass or you prefer like beefy. kenny who is just like you know he's going to show you when he gets in the ring but he's kind of like playing mind games the whole way the whole way there you know but, and I, yeah. I, I i'll go on the record and say i like i like heel kenny way better than I like face Kenny 100%. But see my thing is I seen I seen the smarmy smart Alec heel and that's Seth Rollins. 
he does that way better than Kenny does. Uh, he's yeah. more believable as a as a heel to me than yeah, exactly that guy in the back there. He's more, he's more that character is like he's. So my thing is he's he's in Roman's position, Kenny Omega, and he's trying to he's trying to play Roman as a he's trying to do the same thing as Roman does as a champion, and he's trying to play Seth's character as a as a as a smart ass heel. Basically, and he but Seth does, did it as champion too. So I mean, it no, works. no, saying he does like, it better. Like Kenny, Kenny, I just don't buy it. Like I can see Seth Rollins, and I can believe mm-hmm. he's gonna do something. He's he. I can believe he's a heel. I can believe he's a, he's a, he's that character. He's oh yeah, Kenny gives me total total asshole vibes. I think I, see, I feel no, like I, I believe that. him one hundred percent. Like I, I feel like he everything he does, I'm just like, oh, dude, he's such a douche. You know what I mean? And that's that's what he mm-hmm. wants you to feel and yeah. think. You know, um, I don't, I so don't it, see it works it for personally. me. I'm interested to hear what hear what yeah. Jordan's got to chime in on this. All right, Jordan, let's so, hear it. All right, so I both of you started with. Okay, so like, let's just take this last year and a half run of Roman, and we'll talk about just those promos. Like, hold on, so we're just gonna ditch everything before that and act like that never happened. Now, That's like, the evolution. No, 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 no. We're we're gonna we're taking the whole thing of both these wrestlers. We're comparing them as a whole, right? Like that's what we're doing. Like we've talked about Kenny in New Japan. We've talked about old Roman. Like so, as a whole. Dude, Roman Reigns was shit on the mic until he got with Paul Heyman. Heyman didn't help him. Whether or not you guys want to admit that Heyman helped him a ton on the mic, he did because he makes him feel more sure of himself the same way he does with fucking Brock. Look at Brock on the fucking mic without Paul Heyman. It's like, Jesus Christ. Oh, gosh. Here we go. Don't you guys remember when Brock got on the fucking mic and Paul Heyman was like, Oh God, here we fucking go. What's he gonna <laughs> yeah. say now? Like, dude, yeah. that's I feel like that's where Roman was when Paul Heyman got with him. Like, Heyman just gives him that level of like confidence. Like, you are the baddest fucking dude in this yeah. company. He doesn't Sorry, have to, de- 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 to declare anything anymore. He just, you know, he just. Sorry, says guys. It if you have kids, when I'm on this show, it's not PG. It's it. <laughs> I, I, I kind of shoot it out a little bit here. So, um. <laughs> Kenny, like, I get what Marco's saying. I completely get it. Like, it's hard to buy him as this person because he is so nice. But, like, dude, Roman's the exact same way. Seth is the exact same way. Like, off camera, they are, like, the nicest guys ever. So, like, you have to, like, put that put that mm-hmm. away. Like, dude, Kenny reminds me of, like, a sleazeball, like, car salesman kind of dude right now. Like, that's, yeah. like, the vibes he gives off to me. And it works to me. Like, his fucking hair, his facial hair, yeah. the way he comes out to the ring, it just it's just all douchey. Like, it... it it's not the same as Roman because he's not he doesn't come off as like a straight like I can I can destroy you in two seconds, but you still know in the back of your head, man, Kenny Omega can still pull out the cleaner and kick anyone's ass when he talks on the mic. Like right. I do feel like they lean on Callus way too much, and I don't like Don Callis at all. Like I never have. It's just one of those you things. You don't again, like the jackal? No. <sighs> I, uh, I I didn't like him at first, but he grew on me. I kind of I kind of dig Don Callis and what he's done with uh you know with Kenny and the Bucks and all of them, dude. I I I, I like it. So I I guess for me, like if we're doing overall of like the specs of their career, I would go with Kenny on the mic just because. I felt like that dude from the beginning could deliver a powerful promo. Yeah, they're leaning on Don Callis too much now. But, dude, still, you guys don't think uh, Kenny Omega could come out and deliver a powerful promo with nobody else out in the ring? Like, dude, he could talk to an empty arena, and I'd be fine with it. I don't know. I've never been a fan of Kenny's promos. To me, that was always the weak spot. Even going back to his stuff in New Japan, I felt like it was kind of just generic. I I felt like I get it to me... I feel like Kenny is acting when he's doing promos. You know what I mean? It never seems real to me. Um, whereas there's a little, there's just a little bit more realism from Roman. That's dude. Roman's see- most impactful promo was when he announced he got fucking sick. Like dude, up until that point, the dude didn't have an impactful promo. What like, about when he what- was calling out Seamus for having tater tots? Get the fuck out of here. You aren't serious. <laughs> what, about, what about when he told that? that uh, hey, what about when he told the Jack and the Beanstalk story to the big show? Dude, Roman did nothing on the mic until, and it's sad to use that as the like his crutch for like his biggest promo because up until that point, there was no promo that you were like, all right, man, that's Roman's yeah. number, Roman's number one promo. There yeah. wasn't one. It was Jordan, just a, hey. I'm about um, to dunk on you, dude. I think the best promo. Uh, so I started back watching wrestling hardcore in 2014. 
the best promo I have seen in that seven year period was the night after WrestleMania 33 when Roman got cussed out by the fans for five minutes, picked up the mic and said, this is my yard now and dropped it and walked out. What's been better (laughs) than that in the last seven years? I think we're also forgetting the, uh, the, I forget what raw it was, um, where he came out and I think, I think Brock Lesnar was supposed to appear on raw. And then, you know, Roman came out and cut that promo like, Hey, guess what guys? Guess what? He's not here tonight. Just like he isn't any other night, blah, blah, blah. And he just went on that whole thing about like, Oh uh, yeah. How he's a a part-timer. And then like, they did that thing where he went back and he got in that confrontation with, uh, with Vince McMahon. Um, like, see that, that's a bit, see me, that was a memorable promo because everyone's actually on his side because people were just like, what the hell? This dude doesn't show up with the bell, blah, blah, blah. I think that was like leading up to when he actually beat him. It might've been, that no, that was uh, that was before WrestleMania 34 when he ended up getting beat too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SummerSlam was the one when he finally beat him. So yeah, yeah. but yeah, he's at he's at he had a few gems mixed in with the duds. But yeah, you're right, yeah. Jordan. We we can't forget about him getting dog food smeared on his face by Baron Corbin and stuff. That wasn't that wasn't as long ago as it seems, man. Um, yeah, but let's the, go the, to uh, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I was gonna say the other thing too is like Kenny and the Bucks didn't start dressing like that until Seth Rollins did. So let's just oh, yeah. let's throw that out there as well. So yeah, that wasn't like an and, they, and to me, like I said, that like he was the doing god, that. The drip god definitely originated that. For sure. Yeah, and then they try to copy him, like try to be like super obnoxious and wear crazy stuff. Like that's why I don't buy it. That's why they like anything they say, anything they dress as. I've seen that already, and one man did that. The drip. True, god, but Seth you can't Rollins. look. You can't look at. You can't look at the elite and just not think like this is just a bunch of freaking bros, dude. Yeah. These are like these are yeah. like straight up bros, and they're just like those those guys that are like only cool to themselves, but they are so confident in their like coolness in their pack that they just exude straight douchebaggery, you know. And they come I, out in onesies for God's yeah, sake, just like exactly. I usually get worked hey, into hey, a hey, work, don't be but... talking. Don't be talking shit about rompers and onesies, okay? Yeah. All right. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to... on your clothing line. We're talking about a dude wearing it. <laughs> no, Marco called me a witch one time on the show. Oh yeah. My, my clothes. <laughs> yeah. I need y'all to back up off my rompers. Like a witch. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> let, let's talk about that. Uh, let's go to the next category. This one is probably the most subjective. We're gonna talk mm-hmm. presence. All right. So this is really just kind of the vibe you get when, when they come out, how they carry themselves in the ring, um, backstage promos, all the above. Uh, Sheena, who's got the better presence out of Roman and Kenny? Oh, it's 100% Roman Reigns has got the better presence, dude. Like, Roman comes out in 4K looking like a freaking Greek god. You know what I mean? Just straight up like freaking Cal Drogo walking to the ring, you know? Um, and he's just got this like Al Pacino, Tony Soprano energy. And like, meanwhile, like Kenny gives you more of like the Joe Pesci energy. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he's like, you know, the, the funny guy, the little funny guy. And then you got, you know, fucking Tony Soprano over here. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, Roman all the way. Yeah, I agree. When Roman's music hits and the, the slow entrance, like, it's, it feels like the most important thing in wrestling when he's making his entrance. So, yeah, the music, I, I go Roman also. The music was a huge upgrade, dude. The music is straight up video game freaking boss battle, it, dude. It's like, a tragedy you know, that he didn't have yeah. that music for his entrance at WrestleMania this year because yeah. WrestleMania 30, 37, that may end up going down as like the peak of Roman Reigns. And it's just a shame that when we go back and watch it, he won't have that new that new music because the entrance was yeah. still epic with the you know Paul maybe they'll and Jay edit it rocking the lays yeah if they can, I'm cool with them going back and retroactively stitching that music in uh, Marco I'm pretty sure where you're coming down on this side but I'm gonna ask you anyways the presence who's got the better presence between uh, Roman and Kenny uh, de- it's definitely Roman does I I mean Jordan is probably gonna say otherwise but like like I mean she'd already hit it, hit the nail on the head with the, just a presence just. Just how he like carries himself when he's walking down to the ring, um, just hold the, the way he holds the belt. It, it's just a just a presentation overall. Just yeah, just a look like he like he when he when he when he's on that stage when he's getting ready to walk down that like it's all business. He's not mm-hmm. he's serious. There's no smiles. There's no joking. It's it's yeah. game time with Roman Reigns, and you the don't see that. The only thing the only thing holding him back is that giant CGI Roman that they always flash. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, that's kind of horrible. That is, the, that is the freaking worst, dude. That is like a, a freaking buzzkill one thousand. Like, you, know, you, you, 
Yeah, you hear the music, you're like, oh hell yeah, you're freaking vibe into the music, and then all of a sudden you see this like giant uh, Roman Reigns, you know, giant. Like, he def- he you know, definitely needs a, Roman Reigns. Um, he needs the Bobby Lashley uh, entrance, the Almighty entrance. It's probably the best. The lightning bolts. The best yeah. entrance that they have right there. Just I'm, I'm against all the augmented reality that WWE's <laughs> yeah. had all going the, for the those last things, few Those things, those things are already not good, so those things are definitely not going to age well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Those things are like when we can look back on these matches and this like this period of time, we're going to be like, good god, you don't like that's the uh, you don't like the Bianca Belair lips with the no the no no I don't like none of <laughs> it. All I didn't like it. I didn't like it when it was a when it was a CGI dog. I don't like it when it's a CGI Roman. I don't like none of that. Get none rid of, of it. Good. It's it's ridiculous. Oh boy, uh, Jordan, you got any counter argument for uh, Kenny having a better presence than Roman? Dude, you guys have got to stop saying like the last nine months. Like, dude, you guys are killing your own fucking argument. Okay, hold on, stop hold on. I'm, I'm a, nine months. We're like, talking dude, about right now. Though, we're talking about we're talking right now. Talking exactly. about. They came out. They came out as the freaking number one and number two wrestlers. In I know. Freaking, I know. You know I know. PW. So but that's what dude, we're arguing. But let me just let me just let me cut you off real quick. You don't. You're telling me when the freaking big dog is walking down through the. I fucking haven't even audience, said anything yet. When he's, when he's walking down through the. Fuck, I don't care. But that's when he was. That's when he was spitting stuff and Succotash, he still had presence. Yeah, he exactly. Down, Donna, Donna, I haven't even Donna, said my point yet. Donna, I, all Donna. I said was, you guys got to quit using the last nine months and as your so only I, argument so, so for I, Roman. I, I rolled, I rolled okay. it all the way back and gave you an example of why he's still badass. Too. All right, so presence. Uh, Marco, don't fucking start sighing. <laughs> all right, so here's what I'm going to say. It definitely feels... And you guys are going to be shocked to hear me say this. It definitely feels like a bigger deal when Roman Reigns comes out. Thank you. It definitely you. does. Hold on. Hold on. But let me say this. When Kenny comes down to the ring to wrestle a match, that presence, you know that at any point you could get a five-star match with Kenny in the ring. So his his presence in the ring, I feel like... Him getting into the ring for a match, his presence is stronger. If he's coming down just to cut a promo, absolutely fucking not. Like, dude, Roman Reigns literally looks like a million fucking dollars. Like, if you're going to, like, put together, like, all right, man, here's what our prototype wrestler, this is what we want him to look like. Dude, they're going to spit out Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. The dude, when he walks to the ring, it feels powerful, like, the two bad chats are going to get pissed at me for, for praising Roman, but... Dude, it just feels like a big deal when he comes to the ring. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't feel like it was as much before. Like, it was still a big deal, but I don't, it just got hokey to me, dude. Like, it was just the same entrance every time. Like, all right, man, now he's going to come down through the crowd. Like, it it just, I don't know. I I think you guys are 100% right. The music makes it feel completely different. Like, Mm -hmm. that music makes him feel way more mage than the old music did because. I think everybody was just tired of hearing that fucking music. Like, it, yeah, I was at least. Like, dude, it just got to a he point. He should have got new like, music after they broke up with the Shield for oh, sure. 100%. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. They shouldn't have just gave him that like a custody mm-hmm. battle, like when the kids <laughs> or yeah, when the yeah. parents the Shield him. gimmick. Like, yeah, I, and, he, I just, and he still wore Shield gear for like years. After and it was they stupid. Like for for what? Yeah. Like what? What was the point? He was so, hanging on. He was hoping, you know, that I, his team would come back together. I, I'll give this one to Roman just because it does feel like a bigger deal when he walks to the ring right now. Yeah, because they have made him feel like a million dollars. And dude, having Paul Heyman at your side, I don't fucking care what anyone says. When that dude is your manager, your advocate, your fucking counsel, whatever you want to call him, dude, you know the big match is about to go down when Paul Heyman's out there, like. Paul Heyman is there for the main event and the main event only. Yeah, yeah. for I'll, sure. And I'll give I'll give Kenny props uh, real quick because when he squared up with Daniel Bryan, you got you you got that feel of like badass Kenny. You know what I mean? Because we're used to him being like jokey and having the elite out there and kind of nope. just like cutting comedic promos and stuff and making corny jokes. But like when he squared up with Daniel Bryan, like he he had that intensity. You know what I mean? Like you could just tell, like oh shit, and like that's oh. when you're like. That's when you start to like take that step back and think like, oh god, this guy could like kick that's my in, ass. That's, that's in ring Kenny presence. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But that's still presence, you know. Like if he yeah. if he used that more than he used the you know the joking you know yeah. elite Kenny, um, I feel like people would be like, oh damn, you know. I agree. Um, but I mean, I don't, I don't again. I don't hate the jokingness. I don't hate the lightheartedness that that Kenny brings to his matches and his presence. But it does feel good when you're just like. Damn, this is the maybe this is the best wrestler in the world. You know, like I'm about um, to watch the best wrestler in the world. Yeah, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give that uh I'm gonna give that to Daniel Bryan over 
uh, Kenny Omega, sorry. When that, that match uh, happened, it was, I don't care what anyone says, that was more wanting to see Daniel Bryan face Kenny Omega. True, but this Kenny was the Omega promo before the match. Like, this was when they were just like, when they were making the match, when it wasn't, um, you know, like before still they Daniel actually. Bryan. Yeah. It was still Daniel Bryan to me. Not because he was a former Daniel WWE Bryan guy. Anymore. It's Brian Danielson. De- Brian right. Danielson, yes. He's a bigger <laughs> name out of the two, technically. So. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Marco, stop! It's no. uh, are you saying? No. I mean, it's true. No. I would rather see Kenny. I, I kind of got to roll with Jordan on this one. I, I'm over Daniel Bryan. You guys, no. or Bryan <laughs> Danson, whatever <laughs> you want right. to call him. I've uh, I talked about it a few times. Like it, the fans are the ones that have pushed him up, man. Like I, I he yeah. is great, but he's not an all time great man. God, like, I, God I, forbid, I, God forbid, the company push somebody that the fans want them to push. That, exactly. was, that would be fucking terrible. Yeah, dude. it's awful. It's not. They don't that's not. Anything. That's that's yeah. not what Seth is saying though, dude. Like I get what he's saying because like when when the fans pushed Daniel Bryan, I was one of the people that was like, "We're really gonna believe that this fucking little short dude is better than fucking uh, Triple H and all." I like, come on, dude. Like, but, hold just, on. It, he became just, he became just the the avatar for the fans. It wasn't so much about him. People yeah. just latched onto him, and he became like, "Okay, we're gonna hijack the shows." until we get Daniel Bryan in every main event. I mean, you saw it at WrestleMania this year. I guarantee you the original plan was Edge versus Roman one-on-one, but we had to get Daniel Bryan in there. I'm, I'm no. surprised I'm surprised Daniel Bryan hasn't been inserted into the main topic of this podcast, and we didn't make it a three-way between Roman and Kenny and Daniel. You know what I mean? Like, it's, that's so, it's become a meme at this point. Like, anytime there's a big match coming on, you'll see, you know, people like Steel Real to Us and, like, Atomic Elbow. They'll make the memes of, no, now it's a three-way. Way with Daniel Bryan jumping in there, so, yeah, so like, you know he the, was, the meme of the guy licking his chops. Sometimes he sees a big ass. Yeah, yeah, Daniel Bryan was waiting way. to get. Yeah, I mean, get Daniel Bryan was put in there because of Edge, because Edge couldn't take have a match with Roman. They couldn't well, do a thirty talking, minute we're match. Talking K, we're talking kayfabe, yeah, though. That's, that's clearly kayfabe. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's no way that would. I mean, that match would have went off with Roman and, and Edge. It would have been an awful match. Um, yeah, dude, Marco, you lost me a little bit with when you said Daniel Bryan better than Kenny. Absolutely, let's, let's put it this not. way. You no, know. whoa, 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 hold on. You're talking about short people. Take Kenny Omega and put him in that position that Daniel Bryan was in. You're going to say the same thing that he's going to be Triple H and Dave Batista and Randy Orton and all these people, dude. Kenny Omega <laughs> pinned Okada, dude, without any fucking gimmicks. He just pinned him. How many times? Like, there Did was he no so kind of. He didn't need the fans going. Yes, yes. He just fucking went out there and pinned him. Even when he didn't win, he still looked like a million dollars. Did he not? I mean, but he, how many matches did he have with Okada before he beat him? Okay. I, my point is, is, every time Kenny wrestles, he looks like a million bucks. You're t- telling me Daniel loses. Bryan every time he wrestles <laughs> looks like a million dollars? Dude, all he, Daniel Bryan did was lose his entire first three years in WWE. What are you that's talking how he about? Got, he got over by losing. Well, he, I mean, if you want to, I don't, Kenny Omega don't, lost too. I mean, it's like, a, he's not like them on this unlimited win streak. <laughs> but you're, you're literally sitting here and saying that, that Daniel Bryan is a better wrestler okay. than Kenny Omega. I'm not going to, right, I'm going to cut this off. I'm not going to allow, I'm not going to allow this, you know, this slander <laughs> on the planet's champion. Okay. We're not even talking about him tonight. So I'm not going to sit here and let you guys just slander. I'm not slandering him. Man. I'm and sick drag, enough for him. And drag his, and drag his good name. <laughs> Through this perfect soil, you know what I mean that that he helped to foster. Oh, <laughs> He's God, the planet's Gina. champion. Forget okay, Daniel Bryan, most most overrated guy of the current generation for sure. Daniel Bryan. Oh my God, get out of here! Let's go. Think, I don't let's, even think that's a hot take. <laughs> let's go to the look. All right, so uh, the the look between Kenny Omega and Roman Reigns. You know that's one of Brett's. Uh, that's one of his three big categories. How he rates wrestlers: the in ring, the promo, and the look. Um, I'll start off first in promos. I like Roman's look in ring. I like Kenny. Kenny always has fire gear. Looks like a million bucks. Roman's still rocking like the cargo pants. Cargo I don't really pants. know why. I'm I'm not a fan of uh for for main eventers of rocking pants like that. Like Andrade is doing something similar. Andrade in AEW is wrestling in like dress pants. Like he looks like he's wearing fucking Dockers or something, and it just takes him down a notch. I I feel like Roman if. He just went to like regular tights or something um, would make it look a lot better. He's still rocking. If they're not the exact same, they're very similar to the pants he was wearing with the shield. Um, but yeah, I think Roman could evolve the, the ring gear a little bit. So I'm going to give the overall look to Kenny, even though both guys look excellent in ring. 
Uh, Sheena, what about you? Who's got the better look? I think Roman's got the better look. I think just as far as like straight up like athleticism, if you're just looking for somebody who's just like the statuesque like version of somebody like an, an athlete, like I feel like Roman is like that that mold, you know. Um, and of course, you have those guys like Kenny that are that are out there that you know they're a little bit smaller. Um, they're freaking kick ass. Um, I like I like Kenny's look. I like the obnoxious. I like the mullet. I like the little glasses. I like everything he's doing right now. Um, and again, like you said, he has always has killer gear, but I'm going to go with Roman simply because like, again, just, I think it all kind of like, uh, encompasses with it, like with his presence. I think it all just kind of like molds into one, like his look kind of just helps with his presence. So I'm going to say he's got the better look. All right, Jordan. I mean, if we're going off, like just like actual look of the person, like Roman obviously looks like a million dollars, but like ring gear wise, like I'm in a hundred percent agreement with Seth, like dude kenny's ring gear is always fire and he always has yeah. new ring gear like dude they're they're always rolling something new out for him to roll, roll to the ring like as opposed to roman like we've added a gold glove like that's the that's the big <laughs> that's the big upgrade we've made to roman's gear roman's, roman's <laughs> got off. roman's got multiple kids dude don't be like kenny's probably spending like freaking thousand dollars every time he gets those new ring gear he's thinking like damn i could put one of my kids through college but you know i gotta keep buying this fucking ring you, gear you know dude, what i mean like roman ain't making like a trillion dollars a year <laughs> can't afford new ring gear like get the fuck out of here yeah it came out this week that roman is selling more merch than any heel in wwe history wow i can bet yeah yeah uh marco who's got the better look kenny or roman uh yeah if we go definitely if we're going by look it's definitely um roman reigns over kenny omega we didn't say gear so we gotta throw gear out of it if you're going by look as in presence yeah definitely definitely roman reigns is the better looking of the two like if you put the two champions next to each other a picture or have them stamped side by side who are you going to look at it also obviously it's subjective but just on <laughs> yeah. presence alone who's going to look like a champion they both have their belts on their shoulders they're both shirtless they're both standing there who are you going to say looks as a better champion i'm going to go with roman that guy yeah. a borderline erotic there marco i mean <laughs> yeah. Ooh, hey. yeah hit the porn hub music set <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's uh let's wrap it up. We'll we'll go one by one. We we've, we've talked presence, we've talked promos, we've talked look, we talked in ring. Um, overall, Sheen, who's better, Kenny or Roman? Why do you go with the the freaking fence rider first? Um, man, okay. I mean, you can still ride the fence when nobody here is going to judge you. This is true. Um, so what I will say is both men are amazing. I enjoy watching. Um. AEW and Kenny Omega and I respect everything that Kenny has done as he's climbed, you know, the ranks and literally held titles in multiple companies, like multiple titles in multiple companies, you know, and, and fought on some of the biggest stages outside of WWE uh, and sold out arenas. However, I feel like overall Roman, like, People literally tune into SmackDown just to see what Roman is going to do. Like SmackDown, it could be the drizzling shits and people are literally going to tune in just because they want to see what Roman is going to do. Whereas I don't feel like people have that same energy. Like they're not tuning into AEW to see what Kenny's doing. Like there's a million other things on AEW that people are like excited about that aren't Kenny Omega. Um, and I mean, again, you could bring that back to like, well, that that means that AEW is better than WWE if they have more things that people want to tune in for but the fact that people will still watch an hour and 30 minutes of the drizzling shits to see what roman is going to do like that that shows you what kind of pull he has and what kind of draw he is and you know how captivating he is so i'm gonna say roman reigns is overall number one all right jordan Dude, the biggest we're talking about wrestling, okay? So the the biggest criteria for me is the actual wrestling, dude. You can throw all this other shit, look, presence, you can throw it all out for for all I care. Dude, I'm here to watch wrestling. They could not do another promo for the rest of eternity and I wouldn't be mad. Like, dude, I'm here to watch two guys wrestle each other and put on the best show possible for us. Isn't that like the joy of going to a live show is dude, all you have to watch is the wrestling. You don't have to listen to the commentary. You don't have to listen to anything else. You're just there for the wrestling. And for me, if I'm just going for just the wrestling, dude, Kenny Omega, just 
Marco even said at the beginning, and dude, this dude stands Roman Reigns till the end. All of you guys do. And Marco said at the beginning, this dude would wrestle circles around Roman Reigns. So for me, if I'm going on just straight wrestling, which is what I base mine off of, I'm going Kenny. And see myself, I like storytelling. I love the in-ring wrestling, but I also am here. I'm here for the stories. And Kenny is a master storyteller. And he's like very patient with his storytelling too. I mean, he can literally like tell a story over the course of like multiple years. Whereas like, again, I don't feel like Roman has, I mean, Roman doesn't have that much like creative or he didn't have that much like creative control. So unfortunately he doesn't have the power to like continue storylines from like three years ago or four years ago. But I mean, look at all the stuff with just like Kota Ibushi, you know, that like periodically would like peak up in, you know, while Kenny was in, you know, new Japan and all that kind of stuff. I feel like, and all that stuff is really meaningful to the people who are paying attention. So I feel yeah. like, yeah, he's, he's also a master storyteller too. I'm not backtracking on what I said about Roman being number one, but the in ring work bit. is amazing. And the, in your stance. <laughs> and the storytelling <laughs> is amazing too. So. Yeah. For me, um, I love what Kenny does. I love what he means to to the business. But again, going back to the presence thing, Roman just feels like the most important thing in wrestling right now. So at this moment, I think Roman's number one. Uh, Marco, what's your pick? Oh man, why'd you give me the last the last decision for this? This is horrible. I mean, you kind of you and you and Chad's defense. epic back and forth is really kind of what inspired this to be the uh, the main topic for this week's show. So you can have well, the yeah, last I mean, word on this one. I mean, we weren't really breaking it down like we were, like, yeah, like the, all the categories and stuff. We were just going back and forth, uh, just like tit for tat with different things for each guy and stuff like that. But I'm trying to tally up what we went through. So we had in ring Kenny Omega, right? Right. Uh, promo, we had Kenny Omega, or did we have, I think Kenny I mean, Omega was a promo, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, presence, Roman, look, and Ty. Then Ty. Ty. Yeah, so I mean, overall, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm the same thing as Sheen. I'm a I'm a storyteller person. I love I love the whole story of a match before it actually happens. Um, the rest, I mean, I don't want to say the wrestling is secondary, but you have to be to me. You have to be hyped up for the match. Like you 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 have to want to go see that match. Like they in any type of any type of like combat sport, boxing, they have you know they have their pressers where the boxers go back and forth. Same thing in the UFC. They have, you know, they have their presses. They go back and forth. Look at, you know, Conor McGregor. Words matter before a fight happens. So if you get the two people yeah. jarring at each other, you know, selling the fight a lot more, that's going to, that for me personally, I've, again, subjective, that's going to, that it's gonna, I'm going to favor that more. So I'm going to go with uh, Roman just based on that, just for the, just the, just that part. Just the overall storytelling and then the in, in ring stuff, you know, to me is so secondary. Three to three to one, Roman to Kenny. Is that what All we're right, so the here? Not that it's in. any surprise, but you know. Yeah, we probably got some heat with the two bad Chad, so we'll we'll make it out to them and play their ad for their podcast right now. Drop by and visit the Turnbuckle Tavern, where every Thursday we give you the most in-depth analysis of all things AEW as well as dive into Impact Wrestling, NWA, and all things indie. If you like heated debates, compelling interviews, and a shot of nostalgia, you'll love the Turnbuckle Tavern. Available on Apple and Spotify. Drink it in. It always goes down smooth. All right, it's time for the Royal Rumble segment. Sheena's up first this week, so... Uh, Mandy Rose going up against uh, Raquel for the NXT Women's Championship has been announced for Halloween Havoc coming up here in a couple weeks. And it will be a spin the wheel, make the deal match. Mm -hmm. So, Sheena, let's hear what gimmick do you want to win? Oh, I just botched the uh, soundboard. Hey, we'll listen, we're, talk, one we're more talking time. about Halloween Havoc, so, you know, fuckery is, uh, is abundant. You know what <laughs> I mean? So. WCW production. Yeah. Sheena, what match do you, or what gimmick do you want to win? Um, So they haven't announced what the what the gimmicks are, have they? Did I miss that? Okay, so I'm just making up my own gimmick. Yeah, um, we don't know what I was going to be on the wheel. Okay, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't think I missed that, but um, I'm thinking like a headless horsewoman match <laughs> where uh, the, the first woman to incapacitate their opponent and then stuff their head into a jack-o'-lantern <laughs> wins the match, <laughs> you know? Dude, would that not be like perfect Halloween Havoc fuckery, you know? It's actually uh, not the 
if you, that's actually not the craziest thing I've heard. Man. That's listen. I'm giving okay. points. That's pretty creative. The headless horsewoman match. <laughs> Yeah. On a serious note, though, really quickly, I think it would be cool. I know it's kind of like Taker's gimmick, but I wouldn't um, mind having like a women's like casket or like buried alive match. I think that would be pretty cool. Yeah, it would be pretty neat. But yeah, uh-huh. let's go. Let's let's shoot for the headless horsewoman. I want to see. I want to see freaking Mandy Rose with a freaking jack o' lantern like stuffed on her head. You know. <laughs> Uh, Marco, as we're recording right now, actually, we just kind of it, it just wrapped up. So the the anticipated thirty minute head to head between SmackDown and Rampage, who is going to come out on top on the ratings war? Um, I mean, I watched earlier, so I know they you know Roman didn't appear yet, Brock Lesnar didn't appear, uh, so it seemed like they were saving them for that that uh, last you know. 15 to 20 minutes of the, of the show. I think, uh, I think, uh, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks started at the 10 o'clock hour, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that, I mean, that's going to draw people in anyway, just to see them too. Uh, so I'm going to go with, I'm gonna go with uh, WWE to win. Marco, just turning up that heat. We're going to get with our, uh, AEW <laughs> brethren over at Turnbuckle Tavern. <laughs> we'll see. The numbers don't lie. I'm sure, you know, we got all the ratings nerds out there. So I'm sure we'll have reports probably before we even end up, uh, yeah. before got, we finish recording. Got Tony tonight. Khan's panties in a wad, dude. He was like, he, he had to go live and say, you know, I, I got more money than they do. Like I can go ad free 30 minutes, you know, the last 30 <laughs> minutes of every show, you know? Yeah. So, all right. We're we'll going to let our we, guest, we uh, that into the bargain. We're going to let our guest Jordan go next. Uh, hit row after uh, Swerve Scott losing the North American title this past week on NXT 2.0. Uh, they are most likely main roster bound. I, that should be the next time we see them. Um, they have made a pretty big impact in NXT. They got over immediately, won some gold, but they're heading up to, uh, to SmackDown now. Uh, Jordan, are they going to rise to the top or will they be a flop? First of all, I fucking hate that they called them up already. Like, dude, they were just now getting over in NXT. I loved them in NXT. The, everything, we've talked about this numerous times, dude. It, for some reason, when they call people up from NXT, they lose something. So, based on the history, I'm going to say they're going to flop on the main roster, which mm. I hate saying because I absolutely love this faction. I think these guys are great. They professional flop. Yeah, I'm worried about it. It seems like another another classic thing where you take a nuanced gimmick from NXT and they just take one or two aspects water of it, it and just down. yeah, and make that the whole focus of it and water it down. But yeah. we'll see. They're going on SmackDown, so that's good. I'd much rather want to go to SmackDown than Raw if I was a talent coming up. But yeah, I, I'm a little bit worried about them. All right, Marco, we're gonna kick it back to you. So GCW had their Fight Club pay per view this past weekend. Uh, GCW is making a strong case for passing up Impact as the number three. Um, organization in North America right now. It was another great show. Give us a 30 second review of the pay per view. Oh, man. Uh, did you? I mean, hopefully you guys watched it. Um, oh, yeah. I watched that, it. That main event was a, uh, was something special. I mean, if you, if you love the uh, Matt Cardona, Nick Gage match, then you'll definitely love this one. This is just balls to the wall, just like even more blood and guts. Um, you posted a picture earlier with, with that explosion of, uh, uh, fluorescent light bulbs over John Moxley's face. Just and that was just a tidbit of the match, but yeah, no, it's it was, it was, it was there too. How could you? How could you hate that? I mean, oh yeah, yeah, Mick Foley coming out to uh, to present the uh, the the world championship. Yeah, that was that was awesome, man. Yeah, um, do you think do you think it was a bigger deal than him presenting the twenty four seven championship? <laughs> no, the twenty four seven championship is is where it's at. It's still standing yeah. strong. It's eternal. <laughs> the twenty four championship, the twenty four seven championship is eternal. Uh, yeah. Sheena, you're up last. We're gonna hit our uh, our bonus category. So you're recording inside state lines in the state of Kentucky right now. We want you to go rogue, go against the grain, go against uh, you know your birthplace. You get 30 seconds to explain to all the listeners why Popeyes is superior to KFC. Oh, man. It's only 30 seconds. I think, you know, being from Kentucky, people automatically assume that you like, you know, horse racing and KFC, right? That's the two things that people associate Kentucky with. And I don't really care for either. Um, I'll eat KFC in a pinch, but dude, they cannot hold a candle to Popeyes. Like, first of all, um, the Colonel, you know, white people notoriously under season their food. So, you know what I mean? Like, how are you going to have a white man as your mascot, right? Uh, and uh, freaking, dude, I, I, I want some, like, good seasoned fried chicken. Popeyes always have the mark. And also, what? Am I lying? Am I lying? Oh, you guys not are, even touching it, that one. 
<laughs> you, you, you guys are worried about the, uh, the two bad chads. We got to worry about some other other people getting upset. Oh. I know. She's going oh. to get our podcast canceled. Maybe we're not going to hit. It's a good thing we didn't make any big plans for a milestone episode 150 because, uh, yeah, it may not be happening now. Apple iTunes no. is probably going to take us off here. I didn't even, I didn't even, you got, you guys, you guys got all, got all in your feels. And I didn't even get to touch on my, like, the, all the seasonal offering or the limited time offerings that they have. You know what I mean? Like, you're liable to just pull up to freaking Popeyes and they're going to give you some, like, gator bites. You know what I mean? Like, you never know what the hell, what they're going to have. And KFC don't ever have shit like that. So. <laughs> Popeye's, Popeye's all the way, 100%. All right, let's drink to that. All right, it's time for the weekly beverage break. Uh, Sheena, you can kick it off. Try not to offend anybody. Uh, what are you drinking this week? I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't offend nobody. I offended you Hopefully guys. Hopefully your beer seasoned. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's seasonal, right? Um, so uh, it's a it's a crisp, hazy apple, urban artifact, um, bushel spiced apple goes. So the it's fuck. What's the actual beer called? I don't know. Or it's called bushel. I think is the name of the um, of the beer. So it's by oh, okay. Urban Artifact, and uh, it's called bushel. I guess like a bushel of apples, right? And it's a spiced apple goes. So it is a 4.2% alcohol by volume and um, pretty freaking tasty. You guys know we're, we're all about the sours and the goes, uh, and it's perfect, you know, spiced apple for the fall. All right, Jordan, what are you drinking, man? I'm going to give you guys two because I, I drank two different beers tonight, and this one was awesome. This was my first one. So I did uh, Monster Mash was the first one. Like, dude, I love Halloween. Uh, it's pumpkin ale. It's brewed by the Spencer Brewery in Spencer, Mass., which is... Marco, huh? <laughs> uh, so it, this one was really good. This is probably the best pumpkin ale I've ever had, honestly, because, you know, like some of them, like it's just overpowering. This one was really good. And then uh, a beer to uh, make Brett man absolutely love oh. me. We're drinking some Stay Puff tonight. That's awesome, dude. So it's by, awesome. it's by Wild Onion Brewery. It's a brown ale with toasted marshmallow. Mm, um, that this good. is phenomenal. So I'm going to send one to Marco and I'm going to send one to you guys too. So thanks. Um, man. Also make sure, yeah. Make sure you guys both have one. Cause what's the, uh, good. what's the ABV on that dude? So this is a 5.5. Oh, nice. That's pretty light for a brown ale, man. Usually those hit pretty heavy. Uh, it's really good. I, I kept it mainstream this week. I started off with a, uh, a Modelo, you know, that's like the classier version of Corona and then chased it with the, uh, you know, the unofficial beer of the chick fil show. Good old fashioned Miller Lite. Uh, Marco, what are you sipping on, man? I started off with the Broken Skull because obviously that's a year long uh, IPA of choice. IPA. Even, uh, yeah. uh, even, even during Halloween because there's a skull on it. We, we established right. this last week. Uh, but I'm sticking with the, uh, with the Rosemary's <sighs> Baby. Uh, pumpkin nice. ale, um, I love it. It's it, it's a it's it, it does have spice to it. It's a, it's not spiceless, so she would definitely love it. <laughs> but uh, your your yeah. beer is seasoned well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get into the figure four. All right, it's time for our weekly recap of the latest in wrestling figure news. We'll start it off with a live review of Unrivaled 7. So, uh, you know, again, change up to the uh, to the format. I'll be showing off the figures instead of Sheena this time. We'll go one by one. Uh, you know, we're going to do the how many Marco. So this is a one to ten grading scale. So uh, Marco, Jordan, have either one of you guys gotten these yet? Yep, mine got here today. Nice. Marco, you had a chance to see these in person yet? No, not yet. All right, so here we go. So we will start off. We'll do a. Uh, we'll we'll rate these two together, man. We'll we'll do the tag teams together. So let's start off with FTR, Dax Harwood, Cash Wheeler, the guys with the names right out of a uh, you know Facebook wrestling name generator, uh, in their white gear with the red jackets and the AEW belts. Uh, Sheena, you can go first. How many Marcos do you give these guys? Are we rating them as a tag team? So just like yeah, we'll do these uh, as, as a team. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give them a I'm gonna give them a six. Um, 
we got Dax kind of bringing down the average a little bit. Cause I actually really like the, I like the red and white gear. I like that they come with the tag belts. Um, the face scan on Dax is a little bit off for me. It doesn't really capture him. It just kind of looks like, you know, generic bald man, um, for the create a player, but yeah, I'm going to give him a six as a tag team. Uh, Marco, how about you? Uh, I haven't seen him in person, but I've seen the pictures. I'm going to go, I mean, they, I'm going to go with Sheena. They are, they are pretty generic looking. Uh, nothing stands out except for the, the, you know, obviously the red jackets are pretty, pretty bright, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go with a 5.5 for the, right. uh, for the FTR. Uh, I'll go next to me. I'm giving these guys like a four, man. The, the ring gear and jackets look great, but these head sculpts are atrocious. I think they're right in the mix with, um, with Pac from, I think that was AW series two, uh, yeah. for being yeah. the worst head sculpts we've seen from the line so far. So still love everything that, that AW and Jazzbirds is doing, but these ones just missed the mark. I'm actually considering um, taking my uh, Revival Elite figures, which are, are right back here, if you can see, and doing a little Frankenstein action and maybe taking the head sculpt off of those and popping those on the Jazzwares figures to see how it looks. Because, yeah, these, these I, just, I can't ride with these guys. I, I love FTR, <coughs> Revival, whatever you want to call them. I love these guys. And um, these do look like, if they had proper head sculpts, they would be kind of like the definitive Revival figures. But... It's just not connecting for me, so not not a fan of these because of the head sculpt. Jordan, what say you? Dude, I think all you guys are high. These are fucking atrocious. Th- those head sculpts are so bad. Yeah. Like, dude, it ruins the figure. Like, dude, all the all the stuff that you can say right about these are ruined by the head sculpts. And this yeah, was I agree. the two figures I was most excited about in this line. I'm going three, and I still think that might be high, honestly. Dude, those head sculpts are miserable. They look like two guys that were walking down the street, and they're like, all right, I'm going to sculpt your head real quick, and that's what we're going with on the revival. Like, dude, come on, man. But let, let's be real, Dax, though. Even in, Cash yeah. is okay, but the Dax one is just horrible, dude. Dax looks that's horrible. So but this bad. just this just goes back into, like, they can't even capture them. Like, these guys, um, you know, it's it was like the running joke in NXT. Like, nobody could tell them apart, you know? Like, it was just kind of like, uh, you're just guys, you guys are the most generic. You don't have anything that stands out about you, you know? And granted, we love FTR. They're badass wrestlers. Like, we love their style of wrestling. I love their style of wrestling. Um, but, yeah, they're, they're very generic looking. It's bad. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the second tag team in this set. The Bucks of Youth, the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick, rocking the Lakers gear. Uh, Jordan, you can go first this time, man. How many Marcos do you give these figures? So as bad as the rev- or FTR is, these make up for it. These are awesome. I honestly think these might be the best Young Bucks figures so far in this line, and I loved one a lot, but the- these are phenomenal. So I'll give these a 8.5. Yeah, Did I love both them too. of the other sets have soft goods? Is this the first one that's got the the rubber jackets? Um, no. So series one had soft goods jackets. Series three had rubber vests. So oh, that's they right. only had You're one right. set with yeah. soft goods jackets. The, the 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 thing that was different on series three, which is why I still put them a little bit higher than these, is they had the uh, the actual tassels on the boots. These got like the rubber molded tassels, which are cool, but they kind of spoiled us with that last set with the gold tassel. So. I'm going to give these, um, I'll go 7.5, man. I, and it would have been, they probably would have been around a nine if they would have had the actual like string tassels. Uh, Marco, what do you say on these ones? Yeah, I'm going to go, uh, I was going to say the same exact thing. I'm going to go seven. I think not having the the cloth tassels um, kind of killed it for me, especially with the, the set before. I mean, you're definitely getting the more updated look of the of the bucks uh, with the facial hair and stuff. But yeah, the, just the, just the gear alone kind of, you know, killed it for me in that sense it's kind of like all the warriors um uh, the mattel elite how they all have like kind of like the rubber everything like nothing right cloth except for if you got the jacks classic superstars you you got the uh the warrior with the actual cloth like tassels and stuff but um yeah that, that killed it for me so definitely yeah. a seven even the jacks uh the jacks bone cruncher warrior back in the day had uh had the actual string tassels man yeah. so and i think it makes a difference definitely. oh yeah definitely uh sheen how do you rate the the bucks um I'm going to fall right in the middle. I'm going to say 7.3. Uh, just because I prefer a more colorful Bucks colorway. I think, um, you know, the the predominantly black base on these um, just kind of makes them a little bit flat. I do like the yellow and purple. The, the Lakers look um, looks really good. I agree with you guys about the, the molded tassels. I prefer the loose uh, fabric tassels. But the head sculpts on these are, are good. I like the head sculpts. Um, so that's a win. So, yeah, 7.3 for me. 
All right, up next we got the Murder Hawk Monster, Lance Archer, Super Toyetic. This is probably my most wanted guy in the AEW line. Um, I think they really nailed it on this figure. It's got the size, really cool looking ring gear with the black and gold. It's got or the black and red. It's got his red um, braids. I'm gonna go 8.0. I think this is an awesome first time in the line entry for uh, for Mr. Archer. Uh, Jordan, what about you? Yeah, I'm about the same. I, I'd probably go like a 7.5 to an 8. I, this is a really good fig. Uh, like you said, I was really excited to get this one, and it didn't disappoint. So, Sheena? Yeah, I think I was super excited when they announced this figure. Um, and I'm excited to like get it out of the package. So for all you people that keep it in MOC, you're never even going to get to see the actual murder hawk. So um, I'm pumped to get it out and see the back of it. Um, and see what the, the the braid situation is back there, but yeah, I'm going to give it. Uh, I'm going to give it an eight. All right, Marco. Yeah, I'm going to go even. I'm going to go with Sheena on that. Definitely an eight. Um, I was just actually just looking at the uh, the the chase version of it. The gear is pretty awesome on that as well. Um, I think it's a pretty good chase like, again. It's a it's like a um, kind of like a metallic silver with red. Okay. Nice. Yeah, it, it looks pretty awesome. And th- I, I think the likeness, I think the head sculpt is really, really good on, on this as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with that. I'm, I'm, I'm comparing the braid to the Bianca Belair Elite. Um, <laughs> if it's not up to par with that, it might it might have to drop a few points. The Bianca braid is awesome, dude. Yeah, they they, they nailed that. I don't even look. The, th- the sad thing is, is it doesn't look like I can't tell from the picture. Does it even, is it even braided? It looks like it's kind of like little straight strands. Uh, it doesn't no, braid. They're- yeah, they're braided. You can see. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It's 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 got a little bit of like braid texture to it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's braided. All right, we'll wrap it up with what I think is the highlight of the set. Marco, you can go first on this one since this is how many Marcos. What do you think of Nyla Rose? Yeah, I think that's pretty awesome as well. And it, they actually uh, Ringside actually just posted her the chase for that as well. Um, it looks pretty awesome. I, I I mean I think this is probably like uh, when they announced it. This is my pick out of that whole whole line. Um, this is actually probably my favorite one. Out of yeah. it. Just, a, I mean, it, it's a, it just looks like an awesome figure. Um, that the, I think the head sculpt looks really good on it. Um, the I think the chase version comes with like an orange um, cloth, um, kind of like is it? It's, I'm not sure if it's like a robe or a vest that she kind of wears. Like it's figure. almost like a, a scarf, man. I'm not. A, yeah. It doesn't look like there's anything down the back, but yeah, it's pretty cool. This is. Uh, I think this is definitely their best women's figure so far. This is the yeah. first women's figure that they've dropped that Since. looks like it has uh that looks like it has makeup on. You know what I mean? Some of the yeah. women's face sculpts so far have like fallen kind of flat because they just they look like it's uh you know just more of a natural look. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I like this figure a lot. I think I give it probably eight point. I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a nine. Nice. So I'm gonna give uh, Nala Rosa a nine. Sheena. No, I don't like this figure at all. Um, I I will. I guess I shouldn't like. say it. I shouldn't say at all. The the body and the ring gear and everything is okay. The face is atrocious. I hate the face. I hate the mm. wide open mouth. Like I it feel like I would have rather like, the, her, though. the picture on the box. I feel like I would have rather had like that like sneering like like look than like the wide open her, her mouth looks humongous it doesn't even look I mean, like a real a mouth big, it looks a like girl, a girl man i think yeah i don't know i think this is one this is i think it's I the think best so head too. sculpt in the series for sure the best head sculpt in the series yeah no Rival way Seven, i think it's the best one i don't know i think okay. they nailed this figure All right. yeah i'm giving it a, i'm giving it a five uh jordan uh yeah i think this is this is great i, I this is the best figure in this set for me I, i'd go Thank nine you. honestly on this Th- this is by far the best women's figure they've done to date like yeah. it's, i don't even think yeah, it's really. close honestly yeah yeah Je- what if jeremy if you're listening Sheeta did not mean any any word she said and uh, don't block yeah. her yeah <laughs> maybe that apple <laughs> bushel her. beer she's drinking is sitting too hard guys- yeah because this figure is badass dude like I, yeah <laughs> You guys, worried, you guys are worried about me getting blocked, and you guys said that those freaking uh, the FTR figures are like d- freaking atrocious yeah. and miserable. I'm, I'm more scared of Nyla Rose than, uh, than I am FTR. <laughs> and Nyla Rose, yeah. if you're listening, it's Chick Foley on Instagram. Uh, that's who. That's who you want to. Yeah, we're not shooting. We're not shooting at Nyla Rose. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, you guys bring her 
bring up a figure. Nyla Rose topic, I'm not coming on. Maybe yeah. it's been a while since I've seen Nyla Rose in person, or like you know, I guess not in person, well, you but seen on a TV. But yet either this figure is awesome. It's, it's I'm, by yeah, far the I'm MVP looking at the ringside. Set. I'm looking at the ringside photos. So yeah, maybe it's better in person because yeah, these ringside photos are not doing it any justice. Um, yeah, but she breaks bitches, all. so I mean, yeah. you get a. <laughs> That's always in my mind when I see her. Every time I see her on it's, TV, she just looks she like the Joker. Bitches, so. Like the mouth is like. It's not even it's not even like a yelling face, like an angry face, because her eyes are still kind of normal and she's just like like I don't okay. know. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think now. you're I think you're you're on the you're on an island on this one. I, I think it's an outstanding figure. One of the, the definitely the best female figure they've done and one of the best female figures of the year so far. Um we'll make this next one quick, Jordan. I'll put you on the spot. So the Walmart sting has been delayed. Is it going to beat Series 2 of uh, New Japan Super 7 to the yes. States? Yes. You think it'll still be? Yeah. Y- I'm skeptical yes. that we're even going to see uh, New Japan Super 7 this year. So, yeah. Unfortunately, I think you're right. Um, going to the other side of the pond over in the UK, Chilla Toys has announced that Hollywood Nova is coming out to their line, which is going to be awesome. We're already getting Big Stevie Cool. Blue Meanie's already in hand. So the BWO is complete. Uh, Marco, I'll put you on the spot, man. Now that we're getting the BWO, what is your most wanted figure faction that that we don't have already? Oh, man. Uh, since we have Haku, I'd definitely like to get like a, a like a Heenan. And uh, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure if you could definitely if you could do Andre. I mean, Super 7 does Andre, so... His well, license I'm, might I'm be saying I'm saying any figure line. I'm not limiting you to Cella. Who's if, oh any any yeah. figure what, what's, faction? What's the, yeah, what's the faction you want to see get done? Oh man, um, let's see. Pro, I mean, you know, it'd be pretty cool. I mean, since I, I'm, I'm an ECW fan or was when they were around, I want to see the Triple Threat. There you uh, go. Faction. Oh, Chris Candido. Yeah. And uh, Bam Bam. Yeah, man, that would be cool. Shane Douglas. Triple Threat would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I like that. that. That would be dope. Uh, Jordan, what about you? This one's tough. I mean, um, I, I do wish they would do, um, some more of the, if we're just talking like cello doing toys, I would like to see them do, um, some of the NWO guys, like some of the lesser known NWO guys, like Horace and stuff like that. Not Norton. But I'm, yeah, exactly. I, I would like to see some of those lesser guys get get figs. I think that'd be pretty cool to have some of those in hand. Vincent. Maybe the, uh, maybe the NWO B team. Yeah, exactly. Definitely not the A team. We don't need any more A team figures. We just need the B team, the guys that don't get figs. Yeah, like yeah, like I said, Vincent. We can definitely get him. Hopefully, that'd be awesome, dude. I'd buy all those. <laughs> the meat sauce. So my dream uh, would be this probably have to be a Mattel Creations drop. We need Mattel Elite Oddities, man. I think that would be so awesome. Oh yeah, get, I like that. So we need, you know, we need Kurgan. We need the ICP um, Golga to complete the faces of John Tenta. Give us Luna Vachon. You know, we need a Luna Vachon elite anyways. I I think you'd probably do those five and, and be all set, man. Um, but yeah, I think that would be awesome. Be those guys cool. are super toyetic anyways. Um, they were over. The crowd popped any time the oddities came out yeah. there during the uh, Attitude Era. But um, but yeah, I'm uh, th- that would probably be my most wanted. Um, Square Circle Toys, the, their ringside chaos Kickstarter has now started. Uh, Sheen, what, what's your thoughts on this line? The, I don't know. I don't. Ha- I don't have any thoughts. I don't even. Um, sorry, I, I blanked out. So I'm going to need to pass it to Jordan. What are your thoughts on this line? I don't even know what this is, guys. I don't either. I don't either. I'm like, what the hell is this? Let dude? Marco handle this. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I was gonna. I was gonna add this to the thing, but obviously Seth did. Um, so ringside chaos uh, kind of caters to like the not not so much the wrestlers, but the 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 guys behind the scene. We'll say so like the security. Like there's like security figures, there's like referee figures, and that type of stuff. So I think they look pretty cool. They're kind of they're not like obviously named after specific referees and security guys. They're kind of generic. So like definitely geared towards I would say more like the like. Fig Federation people, fig photographers that, you know, don't want to use people to round out their collections. Well, yeah. If they don't want to use like your existing figures as like referees and and security guys and cameramen, you can have, there's a line specifically made for that, which, which I think is pretty cool. Um, Obviously you have the, you have the extreme sets that does like the sets and stuff like that. And you, now you have this, now this niche of, uh, of figures with the, with, with the behind the scenes guys, like I like to say. So I think it's a pretty cool cool. thing. It's, um, 
I believe it's it's uh, is it cloud funded? I believe yeah, it's, it's crowd funded. Yeah, it's he's, got, he's got some stretch goals to the extra uh, for some of the extra figures and stuff. They're cool, man. They're definitely needed. I'd love to see what yeah. somebody like Figure Kingdom could do with these. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I may if it gets funded, I'll probably try to pick up a couple of the refs just to have some generic ref figures. But yeah, my figography game really isn't to the point where I need like security crew and cameramen and stuff. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> But it is a uh, a really cool uh, a really cool idea for a figure line, and there, there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Like I said, he had some thoughts to do like a timekeeper and stuff like that, so it would be pretty These are neat. Cool. Yeah, and like like I said, the guys like you know uh, Bud Light here, Ring Skirts over on Twitter. I think they're going to yeah. be able to do some really crazy shit uh, with these guys, and so I'm always a fan of the the more wrestling figures, the better. Uh, let's get into weekly purchases. Um, so I'll, I'll go first. I already showed kind of the highlights with Unrivaled Seven coming in. But we did have two of our legends from Target that, that made their way. The uh, the JYD in the red gear and then the WrestleMania 8 Roddy Piper. So big fan of both these figures. Um, we talked a couple weeks back about how the red JYD kind of had a soft spot in my heart just because it's the matching gear from his LJN figure, which was one of the first yep. wrestling figures I really played with. And then I love this one because WrestleMania 8 against Brett is one of my favorite Brett matches. So oh, yeah. th- this is probably my most wanted uh, Roddy Piper figure uh, with the long hair. I would kind of I feel like he needed to come with the IC belt that really would have completed it. But, you know, it's cool either way. I-, I have enough of those belts already and I'm not an MOC guy, so it wouldn't have mattered. Um, really cool figure. Big fan of both of these. And I'm looking forward to hopefully Billy Gunn and uh, Kevin Nash show up this week. Uh, Marco, what all did you grab this week? Uh, yeah, just to piggyback off of the Roddy Piper thing, weird, weird thing, but like son, like loves Roddy Piper because uh, we play. Uh, he plays two K twenty. I have two K nineteen and two K twenty, so like he picks us random people, and he'll he for some reason he picked Roddy Piper, and he like loves his entrance music, <laughs> the bagpipes and everything, <laughs> which is pretty funny. But uh, yeah, he and I have the old um, the entrance stand. Remember when you could press the button. And yeah, it plays kind of like yeah, the uh, entrance. I actually have I have Jericho yeah. still. I don't know how I found it. I have I have the Jericho with the break the walls down, and I have the Piper one. But you press it, and he just it, it's annoying, but he presses it all day long just to listen to the bagpipe. So <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So I got a. Uh, I mean, we talked about this earlier. Finally, it's in my possession. The debut attire for Jushin Thunder Liger, which is pretty awesome. And he, even the uh, the. If you notice, like the the lettering and the packaging is completely different from the other ones. It doesn't have like the doesn't say Liger at the top. I mean, mm-hmm. it does, but it's oh, in yeah. another language. I just that. But uh, they cool. it, they kind of changed up a little bit on this one, which is pretty awesome. I can't wait to crack this open. It's. I mean, we talked about this last week. The super. I mean, the Storm Collectibles uh, figures are awesome. I mean, they're insane. Um, this one it took me a while to get. I've been searching like high and low for a great price on it. Um, it's a, it's the same person. It's Jushin Thunder Liger. So has anyone ever seen this before? Ooh. Blue Demon Jushin Thunder Liger. Wow. It's a that's Knott's, awesome. Knott's exclusive, uh, figure, um, from, uh, Storm Collectibles. What's uh, it exclusive is, to? It's Knott's N-A-U-T-S dot com. It's a Japanese, like, website. Wow. Yeah, I didn't yeah, know that was so really thing, cool. this Yeah, one, Marco busting out the rare heat. I had to save like forever on eBay, just like trying to like, cause nobody had it. It's like, I think it, it was a, so it popped up around the time when they first uh, came out. So like the, 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 the white, the red, white and gold Jushin Thunder Liger, the black Thunder Liger when they were on ringside, when they first appeared, this showed up, but then it disappeared. Like I seen it on eBay and it was, I was going to buy it, but I didn't, um, it was at its regular price. But then after that, it just went to like six, $700. So I was like, yeah, I'm not paying Jeez. so i waited for like years for this and it actually i finally got one at a decent price and it's it's insane it's a, it's so i know I, awesome. I have every single storm collectibles jushin thunder liger until they come out with the badass man another one so yeah so the collection that's is growing. Collection. Yeah. that's awesome dude uh jordan would you grab i know you got some heat you're about to show us you actually got a right. super rare figure all right, man, this is going to take a minute. So, all right, we'll start with uh, today. I found the Hollywood uh, Piper. Um, John I found Nada. This at, at the local John Walmart. Nada. Yep. This, this is quality. One of these is coming to Marco, too. So he can look forward to seeing this next week. And then I got 
We got Legends Piper, just like Seth had. Copycat. And then I, yeah, exactly. And then I also got the JYD Chase with the blue pants. That so was so I take it. I take it you're wanting the Chase, Marco. I mean, I, I'm. I'm t- I want both of them. But uh, okay, and we know you're yeah. a big JYD fan. Yeah. And and then I got a package from the Phelps. I got the Juice and Thunder debut gear, and then I got this as well from the Phelps. Nice. So that's a down payment on that uh, that Hollywood Hogan and Jeff Hardy <laughs> Ultimate Edition, man. So yep. don't open it up because if those don't show up for the end of the year, I'm repoing that Sergeant Slaughter, man. All right. And then we'll get into the heavy hitters now from uh, Stephen Odette in the Fully Fam group. I made a trade for the Chase Slaughter. So, so what did you trade for it, if you don't mind disclosing the, uh, the terms of the arrangement? So he wanted a um, SDCC GI Joe snake eyes that I'd never seen. Okay, so I just ordered me. it. For, I ordered it for him off eBay and that was the trade. <laughs> and then the, the <laughs> most dude, I, I'm not kidding you. I've hunted for a long time. This was probably the most excited I've ever been. I got this today. I got the Darby Allen chase with no sticker on it. Yeah, Is it the chase cool, skateboard dude. also? Yep. Yep. I I wanna say, chase. Yeah. So this is this is really kind of it's neat that you found this man uh, a couple months ago in the Foley fam Facebook group, uh, Chalkline Chad Chad Roberts he found the Series Three Darby Chase with no sticker. But I want to say his uh, I think it had the regular skateboard. I think it was yep. Chase Darby. It was the, the figure was the Chase, but it had the regular skateboard. So that's the right. that's the Chase skateboard that came with yours, Jordan. Yeah, this is the Chase. Yeah, it's got like the, the Hal Haney a, style. Does it got uh, the uh, on it? Does it got the red number on the side, or is the side the same as the the regular one? No, it's it's red numbered. Okay, so the sticker just fell off. The chase sticker just came off at some point. Yeah, yeah. So, um, man, I was jacked to find this. Like, I I had to like do a double take because I was like, wait, there's no chase sticker. And then I sent it to the group, and she was like, oh, that's cool. Are you keeping that? And I was like, fuck yes, I'm keeping it. And she's like, it oh, it's the chase. Yeah, it didn't even register because I wasn't, <laughs> you know, I was just kind of checking it while I was out with the kids and stuff. And I was like, oh, cool. He found the, the unrivaled Darby. Or what's it? Not the unrivaled, the uh, unmatched. unmatched unmatched Darby. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was like, oh, cool. Are you keeping it? I thought maybe he got it for somebody in the group. And he was like, oh, fuck yes. And I was like, well, I need to look closer at this. And yeah, sure enough, I, I was like, oh, damn. I sent the picture of it to Seth first, and he goes, all right, what do I owe you, man? I, I'm in debt to you forever <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just think he's gonna hook it up that it's pretty cool though man Are you, so you said uh you gonna keep it man you gonna sell it what are you gonna do with it so the plan right now is to keep it i mean if somebody made me a good enough offer i'm sure i could be uh persuaded to sell it but yeah money as, of, as of now it's staying in the collection so everybody's got a price all right let's hear from uh, right. our buddy extra cooler Hey everyone, it's Nick, better known as Extra Cooler. Is there anything better than diving back into the wrestling archives and watching classic matches from the past? Yes, there is. It's doing that with your buddies while cracking jokes and enjoying some ice-cold beverages. If that sounds like fun to you, then be sure to check out my new podcast, The Extra Cooler Show, where each episode, my Survivor Series team and I review an old-school match chosen by you, the listeners. The Extra Cooler Show is available wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to subscribe and follow us for new episodes every other Thursday morning. All right, a couple false starts on the uh, Sami Zayn music there. But it's time for How Many Chicks. So this is where we grab one of our 1,000 plus action figures and reveal it live. So we're doing it... um, Slightly different uh, version this week. Normally, Sheen is the one that is uh, popping open the Undertaker's casket and revealing the figure. I'm going to do it this week. And you guys ready? Yeah. All right. And the figure is... So this figure came out in early 2017 at Elite 47. I think I actually grabbed this uh, off the shelf there in Hawaii. Um, He comes with his little dream catcher uh, necklace, got the red mohawk, 
comes with this tomahawk and he's got the it's not it's not attached but it's also not detachable like the rubber like i don't know if you want to call it a loincloth or whatever this is and again just like those bucks we talked about got the molded tassels um sheen you can go first how many chicks do you give this figure oh man okay so i'm gonna give it because Tataka only has two elites, right? He's got the Legends and this one, right? Yeah, he had this um, one, which is this is kind of like Tatanka's default look. And then he had the yeah. Legends figure was based off his uh, look he had very briefly. I honestly, I don't ever even remember him wrestling in the long tights, but that was something yeah. he had like the first couple house shows he was at. Yeah, I, um, I'm going to give this a... I'm going to give it a 4.5, dude. I think... Um, yeah, and this is a scale out of five. Just a reminder, I know we did uh, how many Marcos on this show earlier, but this is just a this is a scale of one to five. I'm yeah, this it a is our standard 5. review. Yes, okay. um, super colorful figure. Got, I love I love the red mohawk. You know, the Rufio style hair down the down the middle. I love the tomahawk accessory. Very unique accessory, and then you know the little uh, like you said, Dreamcatcher necklace or whatever it is that that comes off. So, yeah, I think it's a really really good looking figure. And All out right. of the two, I prefer this one for sure. Jordan, uh, you're our guest. What do you give it? This is a great figure. This is this is like the the elite that you keep of Tatanka in your collection. Like you said, I don't even remember the pants one to be honest with you. Like I remember seeing either. like I, I I remember seeing glimpses of it, and I'm like, they made a figure of this. Like what the? All right, but I mean, yeah, th- this is a great figure. I'd probably go four point. I'll go four point three. All right, Marco. Yeah, same hair. Um... I'm going to go 4.5 on that one. I actually do like the white pants one, too, as well, because, you know, the white pants pop. On it looked it. cool. Yeah. It, 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 was it looks good. Figure. I just yeah. had no connection with it. Yeah, it's pretty – I mean, they're pretty similar um, in that sense, except, for, you know, obviously he doesn't have, like, the – like you said, like kind of like the loincloth there. But, um, yeah, no, that figure is really awesome. It's – you said the red the red hair pops, the, the dream catcher <sighs> necklace that he has on. It's just – it's an iconic, uh, definitely an elite – figure yeah this is yeah it, it's a great figure i'm gonna actually go a hair above you guys i'm gonna give it a 4.7 i think the only thing that is keeping this from being a perfect figure is that it didn't come with the big headdress you know he used to rock the big uh, uh yeah the the big other headdress i'm actually planning on grabbing a uh a couple of the chief j strongbow collector's editions that are coming out here pretty soon and um and swapping out one of those headdresses with a Tatanka. So hopefully that works out. Um, so this is actually going to be our highest rated figure in how many chicks ever. He has passed up um, unrivaled Series 3 Darby Allen as the highest rated figure in wow. the history of how many chicks. So well done, Tatanka. It's a, a monumental night for uh, the Native American warrior. Uh, Sheen, do we got some listener mail? We sure do. All right. Zach Hertzler says, if you were to pick a wrestler's entrance music to wake up to, which song is it? For me, lately, it's been Hangman Adam Page, and it makes me want to do some cowboy shit as soon as I wake up. So if you could set, if you could have an alarm um, of any wrestler's entrance music, what would it be? I mean, what better way to start the day than with the broken glass, man? There's no, you know, I, I hit Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. Hear that glass go. You're going to pop out of bed ready to... Uh, ready to whoop somebody's ass so yeah for me it's got to be stone cold marco um i need i i need a little bit of extra oomph to get me up in the morning so i'm gonna go with uh i'm gonna go with diesel with that uh just to get me up and get me going yeah and then the uh, yeah you got the 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 truck horn and then the roseanne theme music yeah (laughs) that's right what about you jordan Dude, my actual alarm is actually Samoa Joe's theme song. Like that's that's what gets me up and ready to go to the gym in the morning. I, I listen to that and I'm like ready to go. Yeah, it, it, a Samoa Joe would be wouldn't be bad because it's not like obnoxious. When it, well, the the first little riff is a little weird, but then yeah, this kind of like like deep beats. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's not gonna like. I don't know if I would like the glass. Or the the horn, yeah, n- none of that's appealing to me. I like Roman's music. I think Roman's music would be nice and like chill to wake up to. You know, you just kind of start your your day on a badass note. You know, and it's kind of like low key. It's kind of like the same note all the way through, so it's not too much. You know, 
So yeah. I, I would go with Roman, but I do like I, I, I would have picked Hangman Adam Page if it wasn't that's for a good one. Uh, yeah, that's a re- that's a really good one. It's a great theme song. Yeah, um, Kevin Eugene says, "Do any of the three <laughs> hosts now we we have four of us here tonight um, have a fig hunting theme?" I guess like maybe some music to, that you listen to on your way while you're fig hunting, you know, to get you pumped up to like score some chases and stuff. Jordan, you're, you're our resident fig God. So what, what do you do before you, what's your process before you, you go fig hunting? You got anything that you do ritual wise? So usually when it's not football season, my ritual is to listen to the Chick-fil-A show on Saturday morning before I go fig hunting, depending on where I go. Um, there's usually a podcast on in my car, no matter what I, what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, my, my usual go-to is a podcast, whether it's Chick Foley show, uh, extra cooler turnbuckle tavern. Um, but I always have a wrestling podcast on when I go fig hunt. So th- there you go, folks. Uh, you know, the fig God is, he, he finds more figures out in the wild than anyone else. And he listens to all of our pod foundation productions. So that is your pro tip for today. Make sure you're subscribed to all pod foundation productions and listen to them before you go fig hunting. Um, Johnny JB says, have you have any of you ever seriously considered a career in pro wrestling? I did when I was 19, but I joined the Marines after 9-11. Anybody? Anybody in the panel? Anybody ever wanted to like legit uh, be a pro really wrestler? I just size for it, man. So it was, I don't think but it was when really you, But did you ever, like, did you aspire to, even though you weren't like, you know, was it ever something no, that you would, really. would have my, wanted my to dream do? Job, my dream job as a kid was being a Ghostbuster. So and being an actual <laughs> wrestler, I don't know that... Yeah, as much as I loved wrestling as a kid, for whatever reason, it just never really clicked in my mind that it was something I was going to do. I think maybe maybe they just, you know, it sounds funny because being a Ghostbuster somehow did seem realistic. But to me, the the actual WWE wrestlers were always just so much larger than life that, you know, it'd be like one to be like a Marvel superhero or something um, when I grew up. So, yeah, it never really crossed my mind to actually be a wrestler. Yeah, same for me. I never really wanted to be a wrestler. Um, I was a hardcore like tomboy growing up. Um, and you know, the women's the valets and the women's wrestlers, you know, that were in, in while my childhood, they weren't really like the kind of thing that I was like interested in. Like I wasn't interested in being like all glam, like Miss Elizabeth or like, you know, being like freaking scary like Luna. <laughs> you know, like that was not my my thing. I was like, eh, you know, so that wasn't my dream job. I never aspired to that. Marco, Jordan, either of you ever wanted to actually be a wrestler? Mm, no not really no i'm a i'm more of a watcher than anything. Yeah. <laughs> spectator um, jordan yeah, never, i mean it never uh-huh. yeah it, it, there are people that you know watch it and want to do it um i was I, I was definitely never one of them obviously you know with your friends you would do that type of stuff just like pull wrestling yeah. moves on each other but yeah never wanted to like <laughs> jump into it and you know have it as a career or anything like that yeah i always thought i could be like a performer you know i think everybody goes like oh i could be like you know a uh, a singer or a dancer or something like that and here i am i have like a you know freaking fear a, a chronic fear of like public speaking and being in front of crowds and stuff so i'm like why would i ever think that i could do <laughs> that like no way jordan so i had a brief moment in high school we uh we would all all of our buddies would get together for the wrestling pay-per-views on Sunday night at my friend's at Tony's grandparents house, his grandma's house. And we had a backyard wrestling league, but nobody would ever wrestle me because they were afraid they were going to get hurt. Cause <laughs> I literally, dude, I didn't know how to, um, you were how, stiff. To, how, to, how to lay back on the move. <laughs> so if you got a power bomb for me, you were going through something. So like yeah. everybody would always be like, I'm not wrestling Jordan or my wrestling name was J dub. Everybody would be like, I'm not wrestling J dub. There's, <laughs> there's no, there's no way I'm taking a power bomb through a box. So those, those poor, those poor wimpy kids freaking stalled your, stalled your dream of becoming <laughs> a professional wrestler. Work, dude. He had to work on his craft. He's working stiff. He need to, I know, you, need to find, yeah. you need to find some tougher friends. dude. I was hitting the uh, clothesline from hell on him. I was like, well, <laughs> probably not a good profession for me. I'm going to kill somebody. Right. <laughs> And that is all of our listener mail for this week. All right. So Sheena, remind the listeners where they can find you guys on social media. You can find me on Instagram at Chick Foley. You can find Marco running the Twitter machine over at Chick Foley Show. And as always, you can join our Foley fam at chickfoleyshow.com. All right. We want to remind you guys to use code Chick Foley to save 10% on all your purchases at ringside. And remember to shoot us a uh, screenshot so that you can enter to win top picks Goldberg next week. And Sheena, it is time to hit the trivia question of the week. I'm trying to get a streak going, make it two straight for the first time ever. All right. 
Let me let me look at this card real quick. Mm. All right. Who did Shawn Michaels defeat to qualify for the 1995 King of the Ring? Hmm. It wasn't Kama. It wasn't Mabel. It wasn't Savio Vega. It wasn't Undertaker. Who did Shawn Michaels? I don't, I'm going to throw out just a shot in the dark new generation guess and say um, Jean-Pierre Lafitte. Mm, eh. Jordan, King you want to try to Bundy. steal? Okay. I got nothing. Well, <laughs> never mind. She needs to give away the answer. Sorry, I gave away the answer. Did either of you know to have a chance to steal? Doesn't look like you knew. Right. <laughs> King Kong Bundy was the answer. King Kong All right, Bundy, Shane, wow. you stumped us uh, once again. Yes. Give us the uh, Give us some closing thoughts for this week's episode. Um, have a great day. Don't take your kids solo on a uh, on a twelve hour road trip. Take it from me. You know they're they're <laughs> they're always going to be better in their own home. So stay stay at home base. That's my uh that's my recommendation for the week. All right, thanks everybody for listening. We'll talk to y'all next week. Bye.